Ukraine, it's a confused picture overall because although Northern Ireland will be outside of the European Union, the Good Friday Agreement does bestow Irish and therefore European citizenship on its people. Uh, Tommy Gorman is standing by for us now. Tommy, it's a hugely significant day for the people of Northern Ireland and I'm sure they're feeling more than a little vulnerable this evening. Yes, on this evening we're also conscious about how this might affect us. We have lost our ally, our partner uh, at the European Union table. We now become that small island behind a larger island on the edge of Europe and we are the ones who will have that land border with the UK. And over the years, what a contentious border that has been. Exactly a decade ago, some of the final pieces of border infrastructure were being dismantled. In the last week of March 2007, British soldiers pulled out of Cross Maglane in the heart of Republican South Armagh. This day, when borders are topical once again, saw the British government's representative in Northern Ireland a few miles from Cross Madlane in Newry. James Brokenshire came to the headquarters of Intertrade Ireland, a north-south agency set up under the Good Friday Agreement. Local businesses are worried about how a new border might change their lives. I actually do cry at the thought of stopping on the road to Dublin. We were up and down there twice yesterday, my wife from Dundalk, her sister lives in Carrick and Cross, the husband is ill, we're up and down visiting. I would cry at the thought that someone was going to stop us and ask us who we were and where we're going. At Intertrade Ireland, the Secretary of State met local employers. As best he could, he sought to reassure them the UK really is conscious of its special relationship with the island of Ireland. We do have that unique relationship with uh, the Irish uh, government and the island of Ireland issues that we know are very relevant to the negotiations ahead and we are determined to get the best outcome and I'm confident that we can do. No borders! No borders! Protesters gathered at Stormont this afternoon to air their concerns about Brexit. There was nobody to receive them. That's because at present there is no power sharing executive in place to represent their concerns. Northern Ireland, where citizens are entitled to British and Irish citizenship, is special. But sometimes being special is especially challenging. And Tommy, the analogy has been used of a, a nasty divorce in the offing and Northern Ireland, the, the child caught in the middle. Is that fair? I think it's, it's very accurate. Over the years, special status, I suppose it was part of the language here. We saw it in relation to prisoners. We often saw the special case being made for Northern Ireland because of its unique situation. People were asked to be patient during negotiations. Well, as a result of Brexit, Northern Ireland has become unique. Watching the protesters gathering at Stormont this afternoon, I was reminded of Ian Paisley and the number of times he marched here in protest. Today you had Sinn Féin assembly members marching up to protest outside Stormont, a place where in the past they were in a power sharing executive. That may well be the case again in a few weeks time. But you get the impression this evening that we are now on a very special journey. Nobody is quite sure where it's going to lead to, but you can be very, very conscious of the shifting plates. This is completely new territory for Northern Ireland, Sharon. Tommy, thank you for that. Well, the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic stretches some 500 kilometres from Loch Foyle to Carlingford. Both the British and Irish governments have repeatedly rejected the notion of a hard border. But what will there be? How will this new frontier operate between the EU and the UK? Sharon Tobin has been out and about speaking to the people of County Monaghan. Brexit has been set in motion. The UK is striking out on its own. But what will that mean for border towns? When you trade along the border, there's always some issues, there's always some fluctuations, whether it's currency or whether it's price, 
or whatever it is, and it's constant battle. So uh, my attitude to Brexit is to be in the best shape possible, that uh, anybody in business should be in as good a shape as they possibly can be uh, to take on whatever Brexit brings. So I was thinking now today the announcement of Brexit, we're going to get a lot of calls, I'm expecting, but I've organised a few things. Brexit proving businesses, large and small, is now a real concern, as well as the lack of clarity. I deal with companies now that don't even know what customs clearance is. They don't even know what the border is. I, I was with a company that supplies the aviation industry and I talked about Brexit and he doesn't understand it. The border between north and south runs around 500 kilometres. When the border originally came into place, over 200 roads and laneways were closed to prevent people from crossing. In Monaghan, over 90 roads were closed more than in any other border county. Going back to that or anything close to it is hard for people here to imagine. Just taking this one specific location, the parish of Clona is actually 75% in, in County Fermanagh. So um, obviously uh, that's a community in itself um, which could be yet again separated if, if this something like this was to be closed up again. Clonus was badly affected, both socially and economically, by the hard border. Today, the Peace Link, a fitness complex, is a hive of cross-border activity. We have, a, we have a great story there, um, Mara Vili at sea, who, who playing Fermanagh West in Division 1. They have um, played their home games here. That's the only team in, in the country doing that, allowed to come from the north and play their home games in the south. Today, a senior fitness class was taking place. The women here have lived with and without a hard border. When we lived through it, we knew all about it because they would take a tin of beans from you if you came through it. They would they'd let you through with nothing. I remember people going out and hiding butter in babies' clams, you know, and the butter melting and all that kind of stuff, you know, in the summertime. Years ago, I mean, it was serious, uh, the border there, you know. We had a cinema and um, it just closed it, you know, because of the Kelso line of border and that. To what extent customs, tariffs and free movement will be affected, nobody knows yet. But what will change is the normal flow of life in border towns like Clonus. Sharon Tobin, RT News, County Monaghan. We have a, a selection of guests here in Glasslock, and I'll introduce them in turn. But first up, Seamus McGinnity of McCard Whiskey. Your company is supplying supply chain management, essentially getting products from A to B. 31 trucks on the road at any one time. You can be in Dover, you can be in Liverpool, you can be in Hollyhead. What are your concerns this evening? Well, the concerns is what you've mentioned earlier, Sean, the uncertainty of what's going to happen. We honestly don't know. 50% uh, of our revenue for transport comes from uh, exporting to the UK and also shipping into Northern Ireland. We ship from Dublin Port into Liverpool, Hollyhead. Sometimes we drive across the UK onto Dover and ship across into Calais. Uh, and what do you expect to happen at those ports? Well, it's not knowing. I mean, I'm sure will customs uh, uh, post return again. I'm sure that customs documentation, the I extra administration. And we should say the type of product that you transport, it's, it's high-end product, it's pharmaceutical, medical it's devices, even infant formula. I, infant formula and frozen food. So, you know, we, our aim is to get the product to our customer as fast as we can at the most cost-effective. But uh, it's product that doesn't lend itself to being uh, checked, consignments opened, containers that's opened. That's correct. And the fact that we may have to cover two to three border crossings, there is the risk that customs may open our container. But I mean, we have processes in place to make sure that if that does happen, we immediately contact our client and inform them of that. Yeah, now you're, you're, you're hoping for the best, but you have invested hugely, many millions in your business in recent We have years. invested, I mean, we are a warehousing transport value add and service provider. We are building in Dublin at the moment, uh, uh, warehouse facility so we are confident that it will be a soft border and there will be minimum disruption. You're confident, let's hope you're right. Lorcan McCabe, you're a farmer and we know that the agri-food um, industry could very well be set for a wallop. Absolutely, you know this is one of the worst days agriculture has ever seen and indeed the economy of Ireland too. You know 50% of beef is exported to, to the UK 
That's 800, over 800,000 animals have to leave this country every year to the UK. You know, if there's any tariff on them at all, it would wipe out the beef industry. And what about you? How are you personally affected? Yeah, well, I'm mainly dairy. 25% of my, my uh, income comes from beef. I feel that would be devastating. Dairy and now 30% of the dairy products has to end up on the supermarket shelves in, in the UK. You know, that's a huge problem. And what people don't realise is that the tariffs yeah. on agri-food are absolutely exorbitant, aren't they? In some cases, 50% of the world trade tariffs is, is put on that, you know. And on further crossings, you know, there's a lot of uh, links between Northern Ireland and Ireland on meat. 32,000 lorries cross the border each year in, in you know, for meat transport. And that's, if there's any cost on them, that's going to come off my bottom line. Right. So, you know, it, it's, it's, a very, it's an impossible thing to get right. You know, we feel a soft border would be good, but we can't see it being possible because if I only get some special deal with England, we're all EU members. Our French farmers is not going to be happy if Ireland has a special deal and they haven't. So, you know, our leaders in ICMSA, the Taoiseach, whoever, they have a very tough job ahead so of them. So you are a little bit more pessimistic than, I, uh, than Seamus, but you were yeah. telling me earlier that you remember the bad old days because a lot of your family are in yes. South Armagh. Yeah, I have a lot of relations in South Armagh and North Monaghan, and we do not want to go back to bad days when your boot is open and checked, and at that stage it was worse, you would be at gunpoint. But, you know... A, div a division in any country is very bad, create ill will, it'll, it'll encourage the people to start smuggling and, you know, it's not, it is absolutely not good. Orla, oh, th thank you, Logan. Orla Hayes, marketing manager of the Carrickdale Hotel, that iconic hotel there on the border. Now, you're telling me that tourism and hospitality, the entire business is booming right now. Absolutely. Uh, both the Carrickdale Structure Hotel and Yuri the Canal Court Hotel um, literally 10 minutes apart, but obviously one in Northern Ireland and one across the border. Tourism is really, really good at the minute. Um, obviously, we promote uh, live, dine and Armagh. You know, it brings in anything from Dundalk, Harlingford, right in then to the Mourne Mountains and Sleek Gullion. So it covers the whole um, the whole area, you know. It's, so it's an all-island strategy that we're using to promote tourism. It really is. And, you know, guests that stay in the Carrickdale and the Canal Court are using our hotels as a, as a destination then to, to tour. And we certainly don't want, um, you know, the restrictions of, of tourism. Well, what sort of trade do you have coming north to south, south to north? To be honest, like 70% of our business in the carrot deal would be uh, northern trade, and obviously we want that to continue, you know, so both in terms of weddings, local customers and conferences, we have it all at the hotel, you know, and we certainly want that to continue. So a worrying time. And uh, you're also a commuter because you live north, travel south, and you're one of 20,000 people that make that journey daily across the border. Yeah. <laughs> Concerns there. Too. Well, that's it. I certainly, uh, you know, I, 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 to, to do that, you know, you want less uh, restrictions as possible. And, and obviously, you know, that does have to come into consideration as well. So hopefully the free movement of people will be considered um, okay. for the people of the north.